Folks, welcome to the dungeon, AKA my bedroom. Now you guys know what the drill is. Uh, you already know what the video is. So I think the best way to start this video off is by introducing my guest. Let's do this, baby. We need to pretend like I just did an intro and I just introduced you. Should we do like a bit? Should you not be in the room? I could go like this. Ah. That's a great intro. Awesome. That's awesome. I could do another one for you if you think that that one wasn't like just for for safety. Yeah, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself? Okay, yeah. Okay, ready? Ah. That's awesome. It kind of feels like I have my ass is on fire and I'm putting my butt in a, in a in a bucket of ice right now. The way that I'm doing that. <laughs> Ah. Certainly looks like you're sitting down on something, but uh, I feel like this is pretty cut and dry right now, and I feel like I need to do it again. Often I misunderstand things, so I I'm really grateful for guys like you to just show me it one more time. Show me it one more time. I'll show it one more time to you. I'll, I'll give a little bit more distance to it. Ready? Yeah, okay. Go ahead. Ah. Now I get it. Mm, yeah. Now I get it. I see the vision, man. Mm -hmm. I see the vision. You're, you're, you're miles ahead. Uh, for anyone in the audience that didn't understand that, um, should probably stop watching these videos. Ted, you've never watched Bar Rescue before. I have a tendency to avoid reality shows because they give me secondhand embarrassment and they make me physically uncomfortable. Really excited to get into this today. This is an episode that was highly suggested by my audience. This is season three, episode two, titled Rock, Rock and, and Roaches. Yeah, that's it, that's it. Yeah, Graham, can you sync that up? Graham, can you make, can you like make me uh, sparkle for a second? Thank you. Oh, wow, you're so bright. I'm like handsome Squidward. Yeah, that's great, man. It's definitely not a waste of Graham's time whatsoever. Let's jump into this. Let's not play slapdick, okay? Yeah, I'm not slapping any dicks anymore. No. <laughs> not today, at least. After years working as an engineer, Steve Ricci left the corporate world in 2003 to open a fetish-themed tiki bar and music venue in the Red River District of Austin, Texas. He said fetish theme, right? Nothing better than a tiki fetish, man. You a know? tiki fetish. I got one of them, too, and it's definitely not a racist fetish. <laughs> oh, my dude. God. Dude. Why don't you go and try to start a, a start a a rock and roll themed fetish roach bar. No, just you wait. One day, I'm gonna prove them all wrong. Fine. I'm gonna prove them all wrong, including you, man. Fine, but I'm pissed. We're gonna have dartboards all over the bar, pictures of your face on it. Don't do that. Don't do that. And not only that, do when it. you hit it with the dart, it's gonna no. squirt out liquids. Gross. Not blood, liquids. White, green, pink. Even grosser. Gold. How many seconds are we into this episode? 28 seconds into the episode. Regretting it already. I got tired of working for corporate America. They wouldn't let me express my tiki fetish the way I wanted to, so I went downtown. I don't know if you saw the bar owner, but he kind of looks like a very skeletal... You are uh, a bit of a skeletal character, I will admit. When were we talking about me? You're a bit of a spooky looking character, I I'll admit that. Really? How does it look when I do this? I don't know if I'm gonna like this. Fine. Oh. Go like yeah, that. don't do that. You know? Ooh, no, 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 come on, no. man, come on, no, it's man. like skeletons, no. you love those guys. That was bone chilling. This has got to be one of the dirtiest bars in Austin. I mean, if it's dark, you can't see the roaches. <laughs> no, you can't, they're, they're just part of the party. Just don't ever open the bar when it's light out and you're good. Now, Steve uses the bar to showcase a series of grotesque performances oh. that terrify potential patrons. Were those skin hooks? Did you see that? It felt like something that happened to me rather than something I saw. I felt it. I want to hear his explanation for what why he started doing, putting, bringing, lifting people up with skin hooks. Yeah, I'm gonna have to hear that too. We didn't have enough people hanging from their skin and the roaches, they they beckoned. <laughs> they beckoned for skin hanging. They took it as an offering. The roaches have developed into a hive mind and now they have needs too. They're as just much of an owner of the bar as I am. Well, I mean, he kind of looks like a roach, doesn't he? That's mean. What do you mean you that's the mean? Guy a fucking Come on. Roach. While most area bars reel in customers with unique and upscale offerings, Headhunters cast an uninviting shadow over the Red River District. Why'd they show the cop car? That was a that was a dark implication. <laughs> yeah, people getting arrested because of the roaches. World-renowned bar expert John Tapper has brought along his wife Nicole and experts Joe Brooke and Jesse Barnes to help with his recon. Well, guys, that dude is losing so much fucking hair. <laughs> dude, this is only season three. You should see him now. It looks like he's gotten like several little areas there that are real trouble areas for him on that head. You know how Jabba the Hutt head looks? Yeah, you're like saying that John Taffer kind of looks like as like fucked up and weird and creepy as Jabba the Hutt. Is that what you're saying? I, like I, John Taffer's like a creepy fucking disgusting being, kind of like Jabba the Hutt. If you want to call a goat a disgusting being, then be my guest. Service expert Jesse Barnes works at the park in 14th. They do these DLC, like, character reveal cards each episode. Uh -huh. They said this last time, she specializes in customer interactions, etiquette, 
and timing. That's going to be good, too, because I'm hoping in this episode something's going to be going along and be like, man, I'm really having a hard time interacting with this customer. And then all of a sudden, she just happens to walk through the door and says, did anyone say customer reactions? And all of a sudden, an audience comes out of nowhere and they're clapping. And Let's everyone's fucking like, go, Jesse! Expert mixologist Joe Brook, the owner and chief consultant of Fancy Bar Consulting in Los Angeles. Fancy Bar Consulting? I wonder what they do there. I'm going to let you guess. I'm going to let you guess what they do at Fancy Bar Consulting. I couldn't. It's too fucking vague. There's just this disgusting, heavy, wafting smell of either mold and must or cat piss. Which one do you think it is? I think it's a delicate mixture of both. I would like to think so too. Moldy cat piss. Those dancers and those outfits, they're awful. That was sleazy attire. <laughs> okay. Dude, John, come on, man. Come on. You could have bars where there are dancers inside. They're sleazy and trashy. Why aren't they doing the two-step? Why aren't they doing swing? Why do they bend down so low? I've never seen this in my wife. I mean, I've never seen this in my life. What is this? Are they staging a miscarriage on stage? He's tearing out her baby. The little fucking monitor they had on there was not real. It was not real footage. So what were they looking at? <laughs> They're going to this bar pro and they know through their producers what's going to be happening and like what goes on in this bar. And then they show up in the bar like nicely dressed and stuff. And they're like, what's happening to me? What's happening? There's shit going everywhere. Oh God, I just got cum on my Dior jacket. Who does that? Who does that? It's disgusting. This band is miscarrying a baby in a bloody mess on the floor. It's repulsive and it's stupid. And it's stupid. And also it's dumb. He loves a good playground insult. You'll you'll see that as we as we go forward. What is the smell? It smells like cat piss in here. It's cat piss. The owner loves the cat in here at night sometimes to kill the rat. I don't think he can complain about that. It just seems very helpful to me. They just don't clean the floors. You see all those people that are throwing up the rock signs right there? Yeah. Do you think they were told to do that? 90% sure they were told to do that. He looked at like one Metallica concert clip and he was like, this is it. They do this symbol where it's like, apparently it means to rock and roll. There's something in that bottle. There's a cockroach in there. They placed a roach in that bottle. There it was not a, a fucking roach climbing in a fucking alcohol bottle. There's no fucking way. I mean, there is a way. There is a way. Killing a roach and then placing it in a fucking, like, it has a cap on it. There's no, what are the odds? How is it that the, that this highly produced show is the first time that this bar is being told, hey, can't smell like cap is in here. Hey, maybe the roaches are a problem and not like, a health inspector? <laughs> yeah, I know, right? These guys are the mercenary versions of health inspectors. How many other liquor bottles are like this? At least I've two. Why was she so quick with an answer? At least two. How is this like something that the workers are unable to fix? Oh, there's a roach in there. But the owner isn't doing anything. I can't. Ah! I can't pour it out. No. Why is it whenever these sort of, because I think I've seen a, like a Kitchen Nightmares episode and stuff. Like, why is it that whenever they show up here, the people who work there are like, we can't do anything. They know that the owner is about to get their shit rocked for the next 40 minutes. Yeah. This is finally their opportunity to be like, fuck this guy. Fuck all of this. Tear it to shreds. Yeah, that's fair. How often do you see a roach? Every day. A, lot. a few every day? Probably. Where do you see them? Did they walk across the bar? Yep. Yeah, we had them in our cash registers with our money. Cockroaches crawling across the bar, crawling through their money. And that girl was actually, she was pretty psyched about it. I mean, you know, she was giggling it up. Yeah, no, she, she's friends with the roaches. She's like, they're my friends. They're, they tell me secrets. Hi, are you? Steve, John Taffer. Pleasure, Pleasure to meet you. Thanks for coming. Pleasure. Let's walk over here and talk for a minute. Sure, let's go. Okay, why does this guy act like a fucking mafia? boss he gives me very weird vibes i'm about to fucking break your knees because i almost drank a fucking roll yeah but at the same time he's also very skeletal not every mob boss needs to be overweight like you know he's like come over here and have some empty pasta with me we're gonna be talking about how you all i almost drank a roll okay i got anti pasty from that yeah I thought it was a great impression. Why are you telling him that, but not me? I've told you that we have a problem. You own this place. You're supposed to know these things. There are no bugs in the bottle. That seemed pretty convincing. There are no bugs in the bottles. They're like, are they fucking with this guy? And they like put a bunch of bugs in the bottles and he's like, how would they even fucking get in the bottles? Like they could be staging some stuff. Like unless the bottles were open, like I just can't see a scenario where multiple roaches are getting into these bottles. Dude, they like to make them play. Yeah. I don't know where you're going with that, but yeah. This is a college town. They don't want clean. 
It's not the culture. Austin doesn't like that. I'd be willing to bet that that's not true. I feel like a college person isn't like, I want roaches. Who in college is like, guys, we gotta go to the fucking filthiest bar tonight. I'm talking fog on the windows, piss on the floor. I, I can't fix a that. bar when I'm pouring cockroaches out of glasses, man. I'm Come on. He didn't have to throw that bottle. That was very, that was unnecessary. This guy is filled with excuses and holds himself unaccountable for everything. That's gonna change. I know. Anyway. That was probably a five minute rant and they were like, let's pull 10 seconds from it. I bet he went on an incredibly misogynistic tangent again. Just immediately after that. And these fucking skanks. Don't cut those fucking cameras. They're making my ears bleed and my eyes fucking burn. You think he really is like a, a raging misogynist? <laughs> I don't know. I get the vibe that he's like, so angry and so gremlin-like that there's no way he can possibly be that angry in real life. Maybe he just likes to read. Yeah, he likes to sit out on the beach and he likes to read. He loves to play Wordle. And Jax. He likes the newest sort of word-based game that came into society. And then he likes to do throwing and pick up jacks like they did in the 40s. Or maybe just some dice games in general. Yeah. I just threw out like three sets of dice. I wonder if Graham will edit me doing that. Hey, Grant, don't edit him doing it, edit me doing it. Dude, what the fuck? Why are you doing it for him? I'll do it again. No, come on! Either you knew it and you didn't give it Are you gonna lower your voice and you talk like it. a man? No, because you're frustrating the hell out of me. That's a funny word to use in that circumstance because it's like, it's not like you're pissing me the fuck off. Yeah, I was gonna say, it's like a massive understatement to how he's reacting to this right now. He's not frustrated. He's not like, hmm, I'm a little miffed right now. Like, he's like fucking screaming at this guy. He's like, I'm not angry. I'm disappointed. I'm just a little bit... Miffed! Shocked at your professionalism. You know what Crazy, a professional man. is? Yeah. A professional is you don't serve bugs to your customers. Maybe you're the biggest bug. Oh! Oh my god, dude. He really got him with that one. He does kind of look like a big fucking bug, though. It's a little bit. Wait a minute. Didn't I call someone a cockroach earlier and then you got on me for it? No, but this guy just looks like a big old bug. And it's kind of cute. It is kind of cute. I've always thought he looks like a really big frog. Like if a frog in Homer Simpson kind of had like a like a mutated baby. Oh my God, he's so Homer Simpson, you're right. Okay, so John is so pissed off at this point that he's now going to bring in his experts early. You see all that? That's all mold growing. I never noticed. Yeah. It's not connected to the ceiling, it's falling in your drink. That's right. Which means you're drinking mold. <laughs> Guy proceeds to drink. There is about 30 cockroaches in there. Look at that. Okay, now I'm kind of understanding it. If the cockroaches are that small. They are kind of small. I don't think this is very fake. Fine, but I'm pissed. Look at this, guys. Those are bugs. Those are cockroaches. Run, there's bugs in your drinks. Those are bugs. There's bugs. Bugs! John Taffer flew off the handle about bugs, so we created a drink after him called the Bug Bomb. <laughs> Dude, that guy's, he's got something going on, man. Doesn't seem like he wants his bar to like succeed at all. I am gonna get on the phone and I am gonna fumigate this building tonight. Damn, he's immediately fumigating. I, your employees, Joe and you, Jesse, are not walking back in this building until we can do so safely. And you, my friend, are an you see Steve's face? He looks like this. He kind of does, but he doesn't look like a tiki man. As far as editing is concerned, I never said that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this will be the first mention of it. During his recon, John found roaches in the drinks. There's a cockroach in there. I like how the cockroach was kind of just like sadly, like <laughs> swirling in the drink. Oh! <laughs> he was like... <laughs> he is styling out there. Yo, guys, shoot me right here. Get my hot frog angle. So John's going to bring them all back in. He's going to show them the ropes. The experts are going to try and teach them things. And based on these people, I think they're going to do a pretty fucking bad job. Yeah, I think that they're going to struggle a little bit. When there's bugs in my drink, I stop thinking about everything else. So I called in a professional yesterday. My God, it's like fucking pandemic movie. Looks like one of those dance groups from America's Got Talent. The fucking fumigators. Is that a thing? Yeah. No, it's not a thing, you idiot. I lied. You said that so like genuinely and 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 like candidly. Come on. I manipulated your trust in me to make you believe something that was not true. God damn it. Welcome to the big business, baby. Welcome to the big business. I don't even think you know. Suck it long and dry, Andy. <laughs> <laughs> there was substantial fecal matter, egg casings, and mutilated roach carcasses. That was a load of them. No wonder I'm always sick. 
No wonder I'm always coughing up blood. I wish we met him sooner. If you see one or two cockroaches at a bar, you can bet there are thousands more. Every episode, they will pick one very unnecessary aspect of something that's going on, and they'll do a full scientific breakdown of it, okay? So we're gonna learn about cockroach packs now. Here we go, I'm ready. <laughs> when there's a roach infestation, they emit a strong musk, which draws more roaches, forming massive colonies like the ones at Headhunters, inside the bar, under the stage, and behind the bamboo wall. That was actually very helpful. I definitely didn't understand the full scale of how to fucking disgusting this bar was until <laughs> yes cockroaches don't just seem filthy they are filthy and carry up to 30 different diseases including salmonella and dysentery which they can spread to glassware and countertops leaving no visible signs of bacteria so basically one roach lets out a big fart cloud yeah. and the other ones they love it so much they love smelling the fart they go Oh, it's time to play. Did the best I could on our resources. It's not like I didn't do anything. I think it's exactly like he didn't do anything. Yeah, it seems like he's offsetting his blame to the, to his workers and uh, not and not supervising them in any capacity whatsoever. Ten thousand percent. Now you guys were exposed to thirty different types of bacteria. You brought feces home to your apartment. You slept in your bed with them. How dare you? Risk your employees, risk your customers. I am gonna fix this. And if I have to run over you to do it, understand, Steve, I am gonna do it. If I'm gonna have to run over you with a fucking car and then and fucking drag you by a chain along the streets of Austin, I will. You see that brand new Ford F-150? You're gonna be blood under its wheels. Wait, he said something a second ago that really resonated with me. Oh, he basically implied that all of the employees were going home and sleeping in shit? Yeah, your employees are walking home with shit all over their bodies stinking and they can't they don't even know thousands of carcasses now Steve you gonna have a drink this is a power move oh yeah he's like you want to try it you want a little sippy sip you want a little sippy sip bitch take a sip no come on you said you like it you want to have the bug bomb take a sip Take a sip of the bug bomb. I want you immersed in sludge. I think that's the craziest thing that I've ever heard him say. That is a very intense thing, and it's almost like he's gonna get a kick out of it in a sexual way. I want you immersed in sludge. I want you pathetic for me. So we're getting an epic cleaning montage right now. Most of these people have probably never cleaned in their entire life. Okay, well, don't say that about them. That's a little rude. You just interrupted my narration. Oh, uh, well, I had to interrupt your narration because you were... You that's that's rude to the they ha might have clean homes. Okay, fine. Then you take over the narration. Okay, I'll do it I'll let you watch the next 30 seconds of what happens and then you can see if your narration is better than mine The bottom line is they're not doing their job. And they do what they can they get away with shit. that's American workers. They're lazy They're not Japanese. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on. Go back <laughs> That's American workers. They're lazy. They're not Japanese. Was that a compliment towards the Japanese of them being clean? I think that was a Stereotype. Those clean Japanese people, like, what are you saying, dude? It would take me hours, hours to clean this bar. Why oh, the f would I, I do that for you, Steve? Because then you'd be a professional. You're a piece of That was heated, dude. This guy seems to have this whole sort of notion of, like, what a professional is, and it's like, yeah, a professional is, like, pretty much doing everything for me and not insulting me. It's like he thinks because he owns it, that's uh, he's a professional. Yeah, it's like, what? What are you talking about? Have you ever dropped a disgusting amount of money? on a public building. I'm in a lot of debt. That makes me a professional. We are the best people and we are in the best position to be talking about the American working class. We, we get it. I worked a cashier job for a couple years before doing YouTube. I worked at Staples. What did you specialize in? Staples. <laughs> fuck, shut the fuck up. <laughs> we don't get paid anything. We get paid tips and that's it. So we have to come into work two hours early so we can clean the bar and stock it for free. And then we may or may not make $20. All right, so why don't you summarize what just happened in like the last minute? The fucking bar owners just said that they don't pay them anything more than tips. These people are only paid in gratuity. That's so fucked up. That's not even legal. Good. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Fuck you, man. <laughs> I'm not going to do your job for you. You're not a professional. That was a nice callback. This guy hires you doesn't put you on a payroll. That's not the case. I offered them the option of paying. They refused. I tried to pay them, but then they wanted to work for free out of the goodness of their hearts in the roach land. They were like, please don't pay us, please. Please let me freaking work for freaking free. Actually, that would be a good way to not have to pay taxes. Sorry, I've had you respond to a message. You're just so fucking boring. Dude, whatever, man. Yeah, I'm just on this freaking loser's YouTube channel. He wants me to watch stupid 
video with you need to stop telling people that about me you need to stop i'm not and also white and also white <laughs> how do you screw people like that and live with yourself damn man? see he just came hot out of the gate really like kind of unprompted you know no that was prompted that was deeply prompted of him of him freaking out about that dude who's had a sociopathic level of disregard for his employees that's what i do for a living i fight lions i fight demons i mean Everybody comes at me. I've been fighting demons and witches and, and goblins my whole fucking life. I've been fucking going to war with orcs. Dude, careful, there's a lion behind you. <gasps> there's a lion. <gasps> Get him. <gasps> Get him. <gasps> when you don't pay your employees and you make them work for free, that's unethical. No, it's not. Where did you learn that? Business school? <laughs> Dude, you went to school? So John's next idea for these lovely individuals is for them to actually become employees of the bar so he literally has them <laughs> sign employee forms. Because they weren't employees. No, they weren't. They were volunteers working for tips is what they were. This was a, this was a charity. I'm not running for office. I'm not a politician. I don't profess to be the Wizard of Oz here. I just try to share my knowledge. Nobody was saying that you profess to be the Wizard of Oz, man. Nobody was asking for that. And also, the Wizard of Oz is a fucking scam artist, too. So if anything, you are the Wizard of Oz, sir. That's exactly what I was saying. He is the Wizard of Oz. Kind of looks like the big head, too. I know that if I put you guys in a good place, I'm going to wind up helping you. That's OK. But right now, I'm into them. And I'm going to work every bit as hard, maybe harder, for you guys. Hey, guys, just got to let you know. These two girls, really into them. My wife isn't here, and I think you're hot. I'm gonna work hard for you, I'm gonna grow you. That was almost like a Trump impression. Joe and Jesse begin training Headhunter's official employees. You know what a Cosmo recipe is? Vodka cranberry and... Uh-oh, uh-oh, me don't remember how to make drink. It's a four count of the vodka with a triple sec. So yeah. it's one, two, okay. three, four. Splash of crayon, shake, strain. Easy for you to say, Triple man. sec, triple sec on top. One, two, three, four, five, six. Do it a little spin. Give it a little triple, triple, triple. You get that? You get that? Do the triple, triple. You see what I'm doing with my hand here? You see this? This is all I learned in the business. This is what I learned in New York City. So what's the first thing you're going to do? Tequila. Atta boy. That's this, right? That is, that is the vodka. It's this, right? That is the vodka. Okay. All right, fuck it. <laughs> John forges ahead and preps the team for tonight's stress test. I got a line of about 80, 90 people outside. <laughs> They're so fucked. God damn, man. That's someone that John called in to come to the bar. I think he told him to do it. I think he I think he wanted that to happen. The little fucking rascal. You're not gonna have any room for the grenadine too. They put me on the bar, it was sink or swim, and I definitely sang. I didn't realize he was bartender slash security. This guy's got a lot of hats. And also, if he was security a lot of the time, then that means that he just wasn't getting paid for years. Poor Cosmo. This is probably the third instance that I've seen of one of John's, let's call them NPC patrons, coming in and just being absolute pieces of shit. I want a drink. Where are my Cosmos? Kicked out of a fucking bar if you did that. Yes, 100%. Treat the bartenders with some respect. Do you guys think I look good today? Just <laughs> talking to you guys now. Don't, Ted, you can look away. You guys think I look good today? I don't. Dude. What the fuck? It was good to actually make drinks for people. Who were they making drinks for before? Demons? Were these the demons that, that the boss was talking about? Literally demons. Yeah, usually we had fucking like demons and rascals coming in here and I got to make drinks for them. I did make this drink for the uh, for the staged miscarriage lady. Uh, she just tipped me a little bit of blood. She tipped me a bottle of... of, of uh... God, man. <laughs> God. <laughs> actually, uh, let's not, man. Let's cut that joke out, actually. Dancers can be very effective. They can increase the energy level of a bar, make it animated, make it fun, and get guests to stay a longer period of time. These dancers are turning people off, and that I need to change. To translate, I'm not getting turned on by these dancers. I'm getting turned off by these dancers. I want a special type of sexy. What's that? What's that type of sexy? I don't know, the kind that turns me on. I got a lot of work to do technically behind the bar. I like how he said that. Behind the bar. Behind the bar. John is in some elegant lighting right now. I, I mean- He looks like a painting. Yeah, he does. He looks like a Renaissance painting. Does anyone know the area code for Manhattan? 212. Oh, that's why there's so many bars called 212 in New York. Oh, I didn't know that. You need to act like you know 
what that means. Can you just like run that one more time? So that's why all the bar bars in New York are called 212. Oh my God, yeah! Yeah, yeah, dude, I know what you- Oh my God, what yes! Oh my God! Fuck you, man. Come on, man. Okay, so you guys know how the new drink selection section goes. Uh, we're gonna have two new cocktails tonight, and me and Ted are gonna read them off for you, okay? The first one is the Coal Dust Manhattan, two dashes of orange bitters, sweet vermouth, amaro, and bourbon. I would really like this cocktail. Yeah, this looks pretty good. Next one, Ada Lovelace. Three dashes orange bitters, two dash gin. Then you got the Ada Lovelace. I'll be right back. Are you gonna make it? Jesus Christ! What did they say they wanted? Three dashes of orange bitters. Dash, dash, dash. And two ounces of gin. And then... Shake it up. Do you have the ice? Moment of truth. Oh, shit. Yeah, no, so it doesn't fill a fucking glass. Well, I think the glass that they were using was much smaller. I'll be right back. God damn it! It still doesn't fill a tilly, tiny little glass. Fine, you win. I'll try it, though. All right, let's see. <laughs> not good? I'm not a huge gin guy, so... <laughs> <laughs> it's important when we do mess up, which will happen, just keep going, keep smiling, don't let the guests know. I think her job is so useless. She's like, be happy when you make drink, even if you mess up. Keep smiling, okay? Let them know you're happy. Is it really that bad? Yeah, oh, it's good. Okay, so they are going for the renovation. I didn't think they were ready for it, but it is most definitely happening. This is a very famous moment because it's either gonna be awesome or it's gonna be horrible. Like really, really bad and offensive. Okay. You ready to see your new bar? Yes. Yeah. Steve, I hope this bar excites you so much that you light on fire. You're burning in the streets of Austin. Burning in the middle of the street. When you drive by, you see that sign, Steampunk Lounge, you know exactly what it is, don't you? All of this signage was made for me in two days by Better Build Sign and Imaging. By the way, that was made by Better Build Sign and Imaging. <laughs> oh, oh my God. God. Oh my God. Oh, that's sick. Oh, no. Okay, so the interior of this place actually kind of looks rocking. We have an actual proper real bar. This is a steampunk lounge, hence we have gears, mechanical apparatus. I like this and all, but what the fuck does John Taffer know about steampunk? This seems like this is the first time he's ever spoken about steampunk in his entire life. You know what steampunk is? I know what steampunk is. I invented it! So it looks decent, they're happy with it, but we need to see what's gonna happen on their first test night. They're wearing the same shit! Now I feel like they were making up fake problems. They were, John was like, nah, they need these corsets. They can't be wearing fishnets, they need something classy, like lace. How is lace more classy than fishnets? I'm most proud of Chloe. She was smiling all the time and it was as if she had known these cocktails for months already. I have that same thing. Oh, god damn. Top is a little bit shaped differently. The, like, there's a curve. Oh, I'm sorry, man. I'm sorry to that. Mind. That's probably a little upsetting for you. It's okay. I have no confidence in Steve's ability to change. You are the leader here. Thank you. If this happens, it's going to be because of you. That's really cool of him to recognize her. I think that's awesome. I did fix this bar. I didn't fix Steve. Okay, here we go. He has not paid his employees. In six weeks? They're looking for new jobs. I wonder if that bar is still open now. Closed in 2014. Oh my God. Bar Rescue did nothing for these fuckers. Well, Ted, thanks for sitting through this and uh, having the best day of your life. I mean, wasn't it, wasn't it amazing? Yeah, no, I had a really good time. Yeah, no, you had a great time. You had a great time. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed that because you're never going to get to do it again. No, I'm glad. No. I'm glad. <laughs> <laughs> do you want to outro me? You can pretend to be me. Thanks so much for watching this video, guys. Hope you had a good time. Make sure to like and comment on this video and tell us what you think. Tell us what other stupid, weird shows you, you, know, you know, want me to see another time and maybe we'll check it out. But otherwise, hope you have a great day and peace, bitch. Well, guys, that's all I have for you this time. But until next time. That's... No, I, you said I could do it as long as I want. So, uh, yeah, I know. I'm sorry, man. I'm sorry. I'm going to ruin your retention. <laughs> oh, fuck. You cut...